In this video, I want to share with you 15 big mistakes that you might be making on your website, which will be holding you back from success on the internet. Now, these are mistakes that some of them I have made, some of them I've seen other people make, and all of them are easy mistakes to make, but the good news is they are also really easy to fix. So this video will essentially be a 15-point checklist of actionable items where you can go through your website, do an audit, make sure you're not making these mistakes, and if you are, you can fix them on the spot and drastically improve the success of your website just within the length of this video. So let's get into this. There is a lot to talk about here. Number one, the first issue that I see a lot of people make is messy URLs. Now, your URL, your domain, this is something that you really need to pay attention to for several different reasons. But first, let's talk about what a good domain is and a good URL. So if we look right here on centralmedia.com, you'll see that Everyone gets the first one right. Everyone gets the domain right because it pretty much, as long as you get a URL or a domain, a custom domain, it'll show up right there. But what people start to miss is when you go to other pages like blog, for example, if I click on that, you want to make sure that it's you know your domain slash the blog or whatever your title is for this. You want it to be relevant to what they're looking at. Uh, and then furthermore, if you go down and actually open a blog post, you want to make sure that the domain has something to do with the title of that blog post. So there should never be a page on your website that has a domain with random characters or letters that really don't mean anything. And so the reasons that I'm saying this, first of all, is for sharing purposes. If somebody is going to send your website URL to somebody else, you don't want them sharing like a gigantic link with tons of different letters and characters that mean nothing, because one, that's really annoying to send and annoying to receive, and two, people are not likely to open that. And then three, the other reason is that it's less shareable by word of mouth. So somebody like Tim Ferriss is pretty famous for this in my opinion, where on his podcast he'll say, go to tim.blog slash trip. And you know, you know, it's easy to remember and you know that it's about, you know, his research with psilocybin or something. So having a simple domain like centralmedia.com slash blog makes it really easy to share. Now that's a big set of reasons right there. And if that's not enough, an even bigger reason to do this is for SEO purposes. And I'm going to talk about more, I'm going to talk a lot more about SEO actually in this video. And essentially it is search engine optimization, which means you're making it easier for Google to find your website. And if they can find your website, they can promote your website, it can rank higher in search, and you can get more traffic, which means you'll be more successful. Now this is easy enough to fix. If you go to the Wix editor, all you have to do is go to menus and pages and go and select whatever page you want right here. So from site menu, you can go down to like blog, for example, click on the three dots and you can click on either SEO Google or you can click on settings. You'll get there either way. Uh, and then just go over to the SEO tab on the top, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see right there what is the URL of this page and you just type in blog or whatever it is you're going to make a URL for that page. It should be really easy to do, uh, especially with Wix. And again, it's really important. So that brings us to number two then. The second biggest mistake I see a lot of people make is a weak or entirely lacking mobile site. Now your mobile site you know, if you think that most of your traffic is going to be on a desktop, then I can tell you it's a good chance that you're mistaken. I can tell you just from my own experience with YouTube alone, I have something like 65% of my viewers are on mobile, which means that more people than ever are using their phones to go on the internet. And even more than that, I mean, people are using their phones even more than their laptops. So you want to make sure that you have a mobile site and that it's configured correctly with the proper spacing and it overall is going to look really good. Now, in order to fix this, I talk more about this in my Wix tutorial. I'll link it like right up there and down below if you want to check that out later. But on the Wix editor, just click on switch to mobile right at the top there and you'll see that your website shows up right here. And sometimes you'll notice that on different pages, it may look better or it may look worse and you want to make sure that it always has the proper spacing. So you want to make sure that you don't have anything sticking out too much. It doesn't have text sticking off the sides uh, and just scroll through it, you know, almost continuously as you're making your website. Just flip back every now and then, check out what the mobile looks like and rearrange it as needed. And if there's something that you can't get to fit here, you know, you can always hide elements. I have hidden elements right here that you can say, maybe you just don't have it on the mobile site. Mistake number three then is having link issues. And this can be several different things. The first one is having links that are broken. You should never have a broken link anywhere on your website. And it's important that you go through and audit your website and make sure that you don't have links that go to dead ends or like 404 page not found. You don't want these errors coming up because one, it's really professional. And two, you might be losing traffic from people that are really trying to give you their money or their business. 
So that's one reason that you want to make sure you don't have broken links. But then the other link problem that people have is actually not having enough backlinks within their website. So you want to really make sure that on blog posts especially, you have links in there linking out to other blog posts so that people find your other content and they stay on your website longer, which is going to improve your engagement time and overall allow you to rank higher on Google. Now on top of that, backlinks are also a big factor in SEO. So if you want to rank higher on Google, you want to make sure that you have enough backlinks, have as many as possible within reason, right? And now the fix for that one is really easy. So if we go to any text that we want to add a link to, you just highlight the text that you want to add a link for. So like say the word growth, say we have an article about growth, you can go down in the editor, click the little link icon right there and link it out to another page in your website. So really easy to do with Wix. There's really no reason that you shouldn't have these all over your website. And speaking of SEO, that brings us to the next issue, which is not having any SEO. So not having an optimized website at all is really, you can't have an excuse for that when you're using Wix because they make it so easy to do. And like I even showed you earlier, if you click on menus and pages, you go over to whatever page you want and you click the little three dots, you go to SEO, Google right there, it says right there, and you scroll down and it just asks you a question. There's also an SEO whiz from the dashboard right there. When you can go through, it'll ask you just basically a survey asking you questions like, where are you located? What is this page called? What's it about? Write a description about it. And you want this just populated as much as possible so that you know, your website comes up higher and you rank better on Google. Mistake number five then is going with either a free or bottom tier website. So if you're using Wix, I recommend not using the free one. You really should be upgrading so you don't have ads for Wix popping up and you definitely want to have that custom domain. You want it to be like santralmedia.com. You don't want it to be wix.michaelbryan.com slash santralmedia, my first website, whatever. You don't want that. So make sure you upgrade. I'll drop a link below, guys. Make sure you click on that link and upgrade your website today if you haven't already. Mistake number six then is a little bit deeper and this one is not having a direct purpose for your website. Now, I said that all of these could be done in a couple minutes. This one is actually the only one that might require a little bit of restructuring, mostly with links. And what I mean by this is some people don't have a direction for their website in that when you go to, say, consulting, if it's a consulting website, everything on there should be leading the, the potential client to contacting you and becoming an actual client of yours. And if you're doing like a fundraiser, everything should be leading to them donating money. And so you want links kind of funneling in that direction. And a really easy way to do this, in my opinion, is to add a footer. So again, if you're a consultant, a footer is a great way to have on every single page, if they like what they're looking at at the bottom, a way for them to contact you. And so the easiest way to do this is literally just to add a, a contact form in the bottom in your footer on your website. But of course, it also, you really want to make sure that your links kind of follow through a logical pattern. So if they're on your services page, it should go down and you should have a button there that says, book now. Or maybe on your, on your first landing page, you want something that's like contact us and a big button right at the top. And this is something that I see time and time again, people miss out on this. And really, if you don't have this, people are going to struggle to contact you or they're going to have less call to action and be less obligated to call you at all. Mistake number seven is a really easy one to fix, luckily, and this is isolating your website. Some people have their website totally isolated from other platforms. And what I mean by this is not having social media or an email marketing campaign or anything of that sort. So when you have a website, you really wanna make sure you have backup platforms. So you wanna drive people to Instagram, Facebook, you wanna drive them to an email campaign, just so, you know, a couple reasons here. One, so they can see you in multiple locations. So they don't always have to go back to your website. Two, so you can actually send them notifications. So on like email marketing is obviously a great example of that. And three, in case anything happens to your website. So if Google changes their algorithm and your website goes down in the rankings, then you could lose a lot of traffic unless you have like email lists and a big following on different platforms. The mistake number eight is having a slow site and I can make an entire video showing you guys how to really speed up your site in the future. But for now, essentially all you wanna make sure you're doing is a couple different things. So you wanna make sure that you don't have different fonts everywhere. This is really easy to do. Just click on all of your text boxes, check the font, make sure you have maybe two to three fonts. If you can do it all with one font, that's even better. But the more fonts you have, the more your website has to load every single time somebody opens it. Of course, this also goes with pictures. You don't want them to be, you know, a crazy resolution. You wanna make sure that they're kind of compressed so they look good, but they're not like, you can't zoom in and still see 
everything, you know, if you zoom 10x and it still looks like a great picture. You don't want that it's too much information that's really not necessary for your website. Mistake number nine then is having no tools, no information, and no value added for the visitor. And really the objective here is to make sure that whoever is visiting your website likes it so much that they share it, that they save it as a bookmark, that they come back here again, they remember and tell their friends. Word of mouth is really powerful, and tools are also an extremely powerful way to provide value to whoever's visiting your website. And so the more value you provide, the more likely people will, first of all, share it, second of all, spend more time on your website, which means you rank higher, and third, they're more likely to do whatever you want them to do on your website. So if that's contact you and become a client, if that's buying your product, if that's donating to your fundraiser, if that's whatever it's trying to do, send a picture of their dog. If you're trying to do like a, some kind of dog contest, I don't even know, whatever, whatever your website is, you will be more successful if you provide more value to the people visiting this. Mistake number 10 then is poor navigation and poor navigation right here uh, is a great example actually. So centralmedia.com is under construction right now. We're redoing the website. And so we kind of cleared out all the things on the top right there across the horizontal menu you see at the top. But this is a great example of what not to do with a website. So you wanna make sure that if this is actually published and this is your everyday website, that's a big problem. Because if people get to other site, every, other pages, so like right here, I have lots of other pages right here. So if they go to like a local SEO page, first of all, they don't know how to get to this page. Second of all, they don't know how to navigate around and get to other pages. So you really wanna make sure that your menus across the top are as logical as possible and you have links throughout your website that go to logical places next. So you want things to link in a very easy to use way and a great way to test this is to actually have other people go on your website and just try it out. Have people go there and say, hey, can you, uh, do you have five minutes? Can you come over and look at my website? And they get there and say, hey, can you maybe see if you can find out how to contact me and just see if they can do that. And this is a really easy thing to fix. Just sample a lot of people and see what they say. Mistake number 11 is having an overall ugly website, just a terrible aesthetic. And there could be a couple things that do this. So too many colors, bad fonts, bad font size, uh, you know, just too much going on, too little going on. You know, there's a couple things that could do this. And so Wix makes it pretty easy to make your website look pretty good, pretty simple. But if you think that's not enough and you want your website to really look great, it may be worth it to hire a graphic designer but for the most part, what I recommend is if your website doesn't look good and you wanna redo a page, just kinda of go in and add the different Wix, like the blocks, the sections they have right there, and generally use their formats to start with because they make a pretty good website. And from there, you can optimize it a little bit, but make sure you're not using too many different colors and too many different fonts. Mistake number 12 then is a huge one in my opinion, and it's something that actually prevents me from even doing business with some people. And this is having an unprofessional email. So if I'm trying to do business with somebody, I go to their website and at the bottom, it's like rickybobby5769 at gmail.com. Like there's a good chance I'm not going to do business with them because they're not serious about what they're doing. And so with Wix or with, you know, there's other G Suite's another great way to do this. You can set up an email with your domain fairly simply. I'll make another video on that if you guys want in the future. And it's a great way to look way more professional so you become an actual business rather than somebody working out of their parents' basement. Mistake number 13 is working out of bounds. Now, when you're making a website, you have suggested boundaries, which you see these little, you know, these dotted lines right here. And I kind of recommend working in those as much as possible for a couple reasons. And so the big reason is because when you're on different monitors, different places that people are looking at your website, your website could look really different depending on the ratio of the screen. So right here on a wide screen, on a standard laptop screen really, you'll notice that it looks great. I like the spread out text like that, but if you go onto an older kind of like squarish monitor, even something maybe like eight years ago, picture that, those monitors, you might have text that's cut off. So you wanna make sure that you're trying your website on a new monitor, an old monitor, a TV, as many different devices as possible to make sure that you don't have any text cut off on any of your pages because ultimately that's something that looks really unprofessional and can really drive people away from your website. Mistake number 14 then is having bad anchors. Now anchors are these little things right here. You see like services right there. So if somebody clicks at the top on services, it'll scroll down to that part of the page. And sometimes people have these in the wrong location. So if you have this down there because maybe you added a picture and it moved your website around a little bit. 
you want to make sure that people aren't scrolling like a little bit too far and they have to scroll back. It just, it's kind of tacky. It doesn't look good. And so you want to make sure that your anchors are always located properly on your website. That's a big mistake I see a lot of people make is improperly located anchors. Now, the final mistake, number 15, this is a really easy one to fix. Some people still don't do this though. And this is having your logo link back to the home page. So your logo should really always be in the top in the header. I leave it on the top left for most of my websites and it should always link back to the home page. So if somebody gets stuck on your website, stuck, I don't know, wherever, they get to a dead end, which you shouldn't have, but if they do, somehow there's a dead end, it should be really easy to get back home. And so the way you can do this is go to the image and the logo, whatever you have up there, and you wanna make sure that it links correctly to your home page. So right here, oh, I accidentally clicked too many times. Um, so if you just click on it once, you'll go over and you see right there, linked. Now, if you go to the image right here, it's also linked. And if you click on that, if it's not linked yet, you can click on it and you can add a link to the home page. You can choose to add this in a new window. I always just do it in the current window because they're trying to go home. They're not trying to open a second home page like that. But guys, those are the 15 biggest mistakes that I've seen a lot of people make on Wix, or actually really any website for that matter. But if you found this video helpful, please remember to go down and like and subscribe. Comment down below if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer as many as possible. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.